Hi, hello, and welcome. My name is Ryan Warner, and today I will be talking about the Atlantic Cod. Imagine being a top predator, part of a species at the top of their food chain, seeing all of your friends and family, and then eventually, one day, you see all of your friends disappear one by one. You see your friends get pulled to the sky and never to be seen again, to the point where a population loses its place at the top of the food chain, and it becomes difficult to repopulate. This is what happened to the infamous Atlantic Cod, that we often see at our favorite fish and chips menu. Cod weigh up to 77 pounds, live to more than 20 years, and grow to 51 inches in length. All cod have a darker color along their spine than on their belly, and have a large head, blunt snout, and a distinct barbell under their lower jaw. In the Northwest Atlantic, cod range from Greenland to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. In U.S. waters, cod are more, most common on Georges Bank and in the Gulf of Maine. In 1850, the population of Atlantic cod in this region was composed of roughly 3.4 trillion individuals and had decreased by approximately 92% by 2005. Cod can reach sexual maturity anywhere between two and seven years. The female mature at the latter end of that range, usually maturing around five to six years, with the males reaching sexual maturity at around two to four. Females find males depending on how loud the percussion fin is to determine whether a mate is strong. They can lay anywhere from three to nine million eggs during their spawning season, which usually runs from early winter to early spring. The most active area of spawning occurs off the coast of New England in water depths from 30 to 350 feet, with temperatures varying from 36 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. The eggs are fertilized externally by the males on the ocean floor. The eggs will hatch two to four weeks after fertilization, and larvae measuring less than a quarter of an inch will emerge. However, mortality is extremely high in the cod cat hatch and nearly all of the eggs and larvae will die within the three first three months of life. In 1993, the Atlantic cod fishery collapsed. This was due to high demand for its food quality. You can see that in the late 1960s, over 800,000 tons of Atlantic cod was caught until it suddenly diminished due to overfishing. Currently, the population is under what it should be. However, requirements have been made to limit fishing. In 2018, commercial landings of Atlantic cod totaled three, sorry, 2.15 million pounds and were valued at more than $4.7 million. Jigging seems to have been the most popular way of catching Atlantic cod. Jigging is the practice of fishing using a jig, a type of fishing lure. A jig consists of a lead sinker with a hook molded into it and usually covered by a soft body to attract fish. Jigs are intended to create a jerky vertical motion, as opposed to spinner baits, which move through the water horizontally. Some things that were done to prevent the complete collapse of Atlantic cod consist of permitting requirements for commercial vessels, separate management measures for re recreational vessels, year-round and seasonal area closures, to protect spawning fish and habitat, minimum fish sizes to prevent harvest of juvenile fish, annual catch limits based on best available science, and an optional sector program can be used for cod and other ground fish species. The sector program allows fishermen to form harvesting co cooperatives and work together to decide when, where, and how they harvest fish. Atlantic cod are currently being farmed making the wild population less fished. This is done through the use of intensive and extensive aquaculture, while also using hatchery systems and other systems. For the intensive aquaculture of cod, newly hatched cod larvae are transferred to rearing tanks, usually one to five di meters in diameter, at a density of 100 to 200 larvae per liter, where they are supplied with live feed the rotifer bronchiinus plicatilis is used during the first period, very often with, in combination with algae. 
The algae are produced in the hatchery or provided as a paste or concentrate brought, bought from a dealer. The cod larvae are fed on enriched rotifers until weaning to formulated feed at an age of three to four weeks, or alternatively weaned somewhat later after an intermediate period during which artmenia are supplied. The rearing temperature should be rather low, being six to eight degrees centigrade during the early uh, larval period to reduce problems with malformations, but is gradually increased to about 12 degrees centigrade. For juvenile cod, cod juveniles can be stocked in area cages of about four centimeters, but are very often kept in tanks until they reach a larger size and, for, and thereafter transferred to ongrowing sites, which are usually cages. For extensive aquaculture of cod, the extensive method of rearing cod larvae to juveniles is based on much lower densities of both cod larvae and their prey, which are natural zooplankton. Extensive production may be carried out in a wide range of facilities, ranging from large saltwater ponds to small plastic pens floating in the sea that are operated more like intensive systems. Natural occurring zooplankton are the major feed during the first few weeks. To increase the natural zooplankton beyond natural levels, fertilization, filtration from the sea or cultured plankton may be supplied. Juveniles are harvested at a size of 0.1 to 1 grams and thereafter transferred to ongrowing cages or more usually an intermediate juvenile nursery facilities before they are put in on-growing facilities. During the on-rearing period, cod are usually fed on ex extruded dry feeds, very similar to those used on farming of salmonids. However, cod need a higher protein to fat ratio compared to salmon and do not utilize carbohydrates effectively. The, a typical on-growing feed for cod has a fat protein carbohydrate ratio of approximately 15 50 10. The feed is mainly based on marine protein aka fish meal. Although plant uh, proteins and oil can replace some of the marine ingredients in order to make a less expensive feed. Production costs are very close to the market price. However, the market price is also quite variable depending on the situation in the wild cod fishery, as well as other factors. Lower growth than expected from results of earlier experiments and early sexual maturation increases the length of the production cycle and, sense, and hence the production cost. Losses as mortalities caused by disease, predation, and cannibalism, deformalities, and escapes from the cages have also been more severe than expected and contribute to relatively high production costs. These problems have resulted in the several companies abandoning the farming of Atlantic cod. However, some farmers with high quality juveniles and good husbandry seem to be able to achieve profitability. By producing cod through aquaculture, the wild populations will steadily increase until it is almost as if humans hadn't cut down their population to begin with. Currently, although cod were heading towards extinction, extinction, they should be good for the future. The goal should be to get the population where it initially was. This can be done easily as long as we don't majorly interfere with the natural habitat. Although the population is trying to make a return to its state before human interference, one problem is that the previously smaller fish now dominate the North Atlantic and feast on the children of the cod. Starting in the mid-1980s, several commercial, commercially exploited bottom-dwelling species, including cod, haddock, and pollock, declined. Once these top predators in the food chain were gone, populations of smaller fish and invertebrates, like northern snow crabs and northern shrimp, increased. Meanwhile, zooplankton and algae were consumed faster as more of the smaller fish species dined on the base of the food chain.
This is called the cascade effect, when the top predator is removed from an environment. No species rely on it for food, as it is the top predator. As of now, the Atlantic cod industry is doing well, and there seem to be no issues with culturing of them. I don't know how they can further successfully make the culturing any better. However, over time, there may be a way to conserve water or save energy and money. You should care because cod is one of the most iconic fish of all time, in fish and chips, grilled, or at any seafood cuisine. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.